You're gonna hate me for saying this and you're not gonna believe me, but studying can be fun. <laughs> I do realise that I sound incredibly cringe and like an over-enthusiastic primary school teacher. However, this is coming from someone who used to hate school. In sixth form, my attendance was horrific. I did atrociously on exams that I should have excelled in and there was nothing I hated more in this entire world than studying. Do you know what? Over my past five years in medical school, every single exam season, I have many, many, many moments where I'm sitting, staring at my laptop, wondering why I decided to put myself through years and years of extra unnecessary education after experiencing all of that and still continuing to experience those experiences I'm still adamant that there is a way of making studying fun before you decide that this is definitely not the right corner of the internet for you please stick around for a little bit longer because I promise this is actually the corner of study tube where our entire lives are not dedicated to our studies and the world does not revolve around getting better grades but the corner of study tube where we want to get the most out of the hours that we put into studying whether that is better grades or just enjoying the time that we have to spend doing it because if we've got no choice but to get it done then why not make it at least mildly less painful if you're new here my name is Faye I'm a final year medical student in the UK and if that all sounds like something you'd be interested in then I promise you won't regret hitting the subscribe button and joining the community I want you to take a moment and think in your head what it is you hate so much about studying or revising. For me personally, I hate feeling stupid. I hate the loneliness of it and not being able to see my friends, socialise, watch TV without feeling guilty. I hate the long hours and the exhaustion and the inability to think about anything else. Every single tiny bit of energy in my brain being taken up by drug names and disease and clinical guidelines. I hate how mundane it is. For me, when I'm studying almost every single day, it's the exact same. And as someone who clinically craves novelty and variety, I find this incredibly difficult. But over my five years in medical school, I have found ways to get around this. Take it as an ibuprofen or a paracetamol for your exam season. Something to take the edge off and just make the whole thing a whole lot less soul destroying. Point number one, we're going to talk about the horrible feeling you get when you feel stupid. At the beginning of any exam season or studying, especially if you're using evidence-based study methods, there's going to be a period where you are getting everything wrong. You feel like you know absolutely nothing. You're at the very, very, very bottom of the learning curve and it's ego bashing and soul destroying. It can make it really hard to motivate yourself to keep going when you just keep feeling like you are getting nowhere. Now, the easy way to get around this, and I think what a lot of people do is instead of doing active methods that assault your ego continuously they start studying passively by reading their notes because it is a lot kinder on their soul this is going to mean that you will end up studying for longer probably not getting as good grades ultimately just longing out the pain a little bit more than you have to so what is the happy medium I hear you ask well the way that I like to give myself a little cheeky dopamine kick every single day even if I'm scoring a solid 40% on passive med is as simple as a daily to-do list. A daily to-do list. Every single day during exam season I will break down my day into tiny little chunks whether you want to do that by the time or the tasks you want to complete. Get it down on a piece of paper, have it there by your laptop and let me tell you the sweet sweet kick of dopamine every time you put a little red line through something you've completed is honestly what gets me through my day. Our brains are very 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 simple things guys. We crave validation and rewards and when we're not getting that validation through getting questions wrong and coming up against obstacles doing something as simple as a checklist or daily schedule that you can cross off can really help to fill that void and keep you going through some really tough and mundane days point number two now let's talk about the loneliness of studying I really 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 hate this I hate being by myself but not only do I hate being by myself
myself. I feel like I procrastinate a lot more when I'm by myself. Enter the concept of body doubling. If you haven't heard of body doubling before, basically it's the idea that by completing a task with someone else in your presence, they anchor you to the task. I'm being completely honest, I have no idea how it works, but it really, really, really works for me as long as it's someone that I don't find too distracting. Normally this is ideal because all our medical school exams are around the same time, so all my friends are studying at the same time and I can go to the library and have many, 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 many body doubles surrounding me. And on top of anchoring me to a task, as long as they are also being focused, I think it obviously helps with the risk of loneliness associated with long periods of studying, but also stops me procrastinating. If everyone around me is working, the pressure I feel for someone to not look over and see me scrolling mindlessly on my phone is very, very, very beneficial. That's not to say that I don't have a cheeky scroll every now and again, but without a shadow of a doubt, it is limited in comparison to when I'm alone at home at my desk, mindlessly scrolling with no accountability. If you don't have friends on your course or a really nice public study space, you could also get this from a quiet coffee shop or a public library or even doing your flashcards on your phone or tablet in a park. Social connection doesn't always have to come from friends or close family. It can just come from being around people and not by yourself 100% of the time. Although I definitely would rather be going around to my friends and not having to think about studying, it definitely helps to ease the burden of isolation that we might feel during exam season. Next, I wanna talk about the most important point in this video in terms of dealing with the long hours and dealing with the endurance of an exam season. And that is the magical concept of flow state. Now, flow state is my buzzword of the year. Buzz two words of the year. Because it's definitely the concept that has completely changed the way I view productivity and success in my life over the past few months. Flow state is the idea. I'm going to read out the definition of flow state because I always, always, always butcher it. A flow state, also known quote, Collo colloquially as being in the zone is the mental state in which a person performing some activity is fully immersed in a feeling of energized focus, full involvement and enjoyment in the process of the activity. Sometimes when I'm doing lots and lots and lots of flashcards and I'm finding it pretty exhausting, I will use Pomodoro sometimes. However, flow state takes 15 to 20 minutes. It's like a ball rolling down a hill. If you stop, it is going to take more energy to stop that ball. Once you get past that first 15-20 minutes that is an absolute slog and so much hard work, it gets so much easier but when you stop yourself you have to go through that hard 15-20 minutes again. On the other hand, our brains can only concentrate for so long. I do not think that it is a good idea to just study for eight hours on end. But I think it's important to recognize that flow state is by definition this place where you feel purpose and enjoyment in a task. And it doesn't matter what the task is, whether it's studying, working on a passion project or editing a video for YouTube, you should in theory still be able to achieve that same sense of enjoyment and purpose. We all know that the hardest part of studying is getting started. What I want to get across to you is if you want to make your studying a little bit more fun and a little bit less painful, the biggest change that you can make is stop interrupting yourself so frequently. For me, when I need a break, I try to do something that is less stimulating than studying to try keep me in that flow state. For example, if my brain is starting to get really foggy and I do need a break, instead of going on my phone, which is obviously going to be a little bit more tempting than staying in the flow state I was studying, I like to just go for a walk around the library, which makes it a lot easier for me to get back to my desk and keep studying and get back into that flow state. Another really effective science-based way to improve your studying and make studying a little bit funner is to work with your friends. Obviously there's a risk that when you're working with your friends you get distracted, but if you have friends or even, they don't even have to be friends, good acquaintances who don't distract you, then doing questions with them, talking through your answers, adds in that element of social connection, novelty, enjoyment, all whilst being an evidence-based way of studying. Explaining things to other people, that's another way of being sociable, but also studying efficiently and effectively. There's one more area 
of studying that is incredibly painful that I want to tackle in this video in order to make studying a little bit more spicy and sexy and that is the stress, the stress. The stress of exam season is horrific. I cannot adequately explain the physiological change in my body when it is exam season. I become a completely different person and it's really, really, really quite sad. And for some people, the stress of exam season can actually be a lot more serious and result in quite severe mental health concerns during this time that really impact them emotionally and academically. I very recently made a video about how to harness the fear of failure. And the title doesn't really specify that. The title is about me getting plastic surgery, but I promise it does talk about how to harness the fear of failure. And the essence of that video is taking anxiety and fear and stress and being able to manipulate it to become a limitless engine for motivation. We cannot avoid stress. Stress is going to be in our lives and stress is a very, very scary thing when not handled correctly. But when you have the tools and know how to deal with stress, it can also be one of the most powerful assets that we have. I'll link that video and some other videos that I think you might find useful in the description below. If you made it this far, then please leave me a comment letting me know how you make your study session a little bit spicier. Or if you can't be bothered to do that, just leave a little book emoji or whatever. Also, if you know someone who might benefit from this video and you're feeling a little bit helpful, share it with them. Like, subscribe to the channel. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful week and I will see you in the next video. Mwah.